Welcome to Electra Online. Well, over the last weeks and months, we've had a lot of questions about trigonometry, about identities in trigonometry, about the arc functions in trigonometry, or the inverse functions as we call them. And so I thought it might be a good idea for us to put a series together that goes through trigonometry, the functions, the inverse functions, and the identities in a very, what we call progressive fashion, so to speak, you know through the whole set of the various identities, how they're derived and what the relationships are. And so that hopefully will give people a better idea of what trigonometry is and how to use the trigonometric functions. So here we have a basic overview. What is trigonometry? Well, I try to put a definition together. I, I would say it's a, it's a branch of mathematics that helps us with angles, vectors, circular motion, side of right triangle, simple harmonic motion, projectile motion, integration, and many, many, many more. There's so much utility with trigonometry that it would become a really long list if we were to measure or mention all of them. Essentially, we have six main trigonometric functions. They're called the sine, the cosine, the tangent, the cotangent, the secant, and the cosecant. However, the first three, sine, cosine, and tangent, are the most used of the six functions. The other three, they're more theoretical in nature. We don't use them that much. Then we have what we call the inverse trig functions. We use the word trig to say trigonometry in short. The inverse functions, for example, if we say that x equals the sine of theta, theta is the symbol used for an angle, and so it's a measure of an angle, then we can find the inverse function by saying theta equals the inverse function of the sine of x. For example, if one half equals the sine of theta, then theta equals the inverse function of sine of one half, and then we can calculate what that angle is. Right now, you may not know yet what that means and how to do that, but that will come later, so don't worry about it. It's just simply an example of what we can do with trigonometry. We can find the value of x if we're given the angle, or we can, if given the angle, we can find the value for x. We can reverse that process. We use it a lot in geometry or geometric projections and then apply to very many branches of physics, for example, or mathematics. Let's say we have a right triangle, we have the sides A, B, and C, and we know the angle between A and C to be 30 degrees. And let's say that we know the value for C, C is equal to 10, 10 inches, 10 centimeters, doesn't matter, and we want to know the value for B, then B equals C times the sine of 30 degrees. We grab our calculator, we punch in sine of 30 degrees, it comes out to be 1 half, so then 10 times 1 half will give us 5. And so from that, we're able to find the length of the other sides in a right triangle. So it's very useful in finding the length of the sides of a triangle, specifically a right triangle. If they're not right triangles, we have some trigonometric functions to help us do that as well, but in general, we use it for right triangles. We can also use it for circular motion. For example, we go around in circles, that means we go through a certain angle over a certain amount of time. Let's say that we were here at time equals zero, we're here at time equals one second. And let's say we travel a distance, well, it's not really a distance because distance is length, but we're traveling what we call an angular distance of 60 degrees. Then if we want to know how fast we're going around in a circle, that's called angle velocity, that's how much of an angle do we cover in how much time? How much of an angle, how much time? We divide one by the other and we get what we call the angular velocity. However, we tend not to use degrees, we tend to use radians, and 360 degrees equals 2 pi radians, which means that 360 divided by 6 is 60 degrees, so 2 pi divided by 6 is 1 third pi, so 60 degrees is essentially the same as 1 pi radians. So we can either express the angle in degrees or in radians. One time all the way around the circle is 360 degrees, one time all the way around the circle is 2 pi radians, so they're both measures of angle. And so we then can say that our angle of velocity is how many radians per second that we cover as we go around in circles. Or we can use it for what we call simple harmonic motion. And here's an object that's hanging on the spring. When we pull on it, let go, it's going to go up and down and up and down and up and down. That's called a periodic motion or simple harmonic motion. And we can describe that using one of those trigonometric functions, the sine or the cosine. And so here we can say that the position of where it's at is going to depend upon how much it can deviate from its 
central position, A, that's the maximum amplitude of the motion, times the sine of omega t. Omega, of course, is the angular velocity, and t stands for time. Again, you may not know or understand yet what we we're just talking about. We simply want to show you that there's a number of things that we can use trigonometric functions for and why trigonometry is such a useful branch of mathematics. So what we're going to do initially is we're going to explore these particular trigonometric functions, especially the first three, and then we're going to go over various what we call identities, meaning there's relationships between the sine, the cosine, and the tangent, and then we have all kinds of other useful identities that allow us to utilize trigonometry in all kinds of conditions for double angles, half angles, sum of angles, difference of angles, all kinds of useful things. And so we're going to show you how to manipulate these functions so we can find all these useful identities that can then be used for all the various branches of mathematics and physics. So at least this is a quick introduction to trigonometry. We'll then go through all the trigonometric functions, the identities, the inverse functions, and then of course lots of applications. Now we already have some playlists on trigonometry on this channel, but I thought because of some things that we hadn't covered yet, let's go through these basic ideas and how all these identities are derived, because that's a big thing. I remember when I first took trigonometry and they plopped one of those identities on the board, I looked at it and go, where did that come from? And how do you know that's true? And that was usually not covered very well, so we're going to make sure that we cover that, so you can see, ah, that's where those identities come from, that's how I know these are true, correct identities, and then we learn how to use them. So stay tuned, and we'll show you all that information in detail in the videos to come in this playlist.